From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. This is Peter Tischer, and once again, I'm without my regular partner, Roger Charlton, who is sitting out there in the control room watching us, us, that is me, and Sarah Jerem. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Sarah just moved here to Germany a year ago. She's a new teacher with the English department at Saarland University. And the reason why we brought her in was uh, not exactly because she is an English teacher, but she is an English teacher and a mother. She moved here with her husband mm -hmm. and her son, I take it? Yes, that's right. What's your son's name? Matthew. Oh, that's a coincidence. <laughs> My son's name is Mathieu. Okay. So that's the French version of Matthew. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to talk to you about was actually about your experience with being a working mother <laughs> in Germany And, of course, at the same time, a foreigner who is probably not used to the way we do things here in Germany. That's right, yes. So when you got here with your son, um, what was the first thing or the first things that struck you as a mother when you had to sort of sort things out, how to take care of him while working? Well, I suppose one of the things that really struck us straight away um, was not being able to buy baby paracetamol. Um, baby what? Baby paracetamol. So when that's a the, painkiller. Yes, that's right. Ah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And in England, you can buy it over the counter. You can buy it in every supermarket, for example. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really think twice about that. And here, it seems that you have to go to the doctor and get a prescription if you need anything like paracetamol for the baby. You'll get some things, but you, you will n always have to go to a regular pharmacy, so there's no such thing as a drugstore. Do you feel that Germans are more hesitant to give that kind of medication to small children? Yes, it, it kind of occurred to me that, um, that sometimes uh, you can't always get uh, the things that we're used to in, in Britain. Mm -hmm. Um, so, for example, something like uh, teething or if um, Matthew wakes up at three o'clock in the, the morning, mm -hmm. we'd be used to giving him um, a spoonful of, of cowpole. And of, of what? It's called cowpole in English. <laughs> How do you spell that? <laughs> C-A-L-P-O-L. And That's what the name. is that? That's the name for the, the baby paracetamol. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so every every English person will that, know that oh, term. Absolutely. Every mom. Yes. And health visitors would always say... Okay, okay. Give the uh, cowpole first of all um, before you take the child uh, to the doctor. Okay. So they tend to say only go to the doctor if um, if it's really serious. Ah, okay. So that's a little mm. bit like America. Mm. Take take two aspirins first. Yeah. Call me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else? Um, did you have trouble finding childcare for your? For a child, or is your husband taking care of him? Yes, um, I, it's quite unusual in the fact that I work full time mm -hmm. and my husband uh, looks after Matthew. Although nowadays um, he does go, Matthew does go to a childminder twice a week, mm -hmm. so two mornings a week. A childminder, that's a, per a private person yes. who takes care of your. Uh, children. It's not an institution. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. So they go to her house and she has a maximum of three children. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, but um, other than that, your husband takes care of Yes, them. Yeah, uh, he's the primary child care. <laughs> does he get any looks from other parents for that? Um, I think sometimes, some, especially um, old ladies are very surprised mm -hmm. when they see him out um, and um, and he's doing the shopping and managing Matthew at the same time. Okay. But he says that he sometimes gets some strange looks, but um, mm -hmm. but for example, they go to the swimming pool together, and um, right. and usually most people just sometimes he even finds other um, mm -hmm. uh, dads, but it's not so not so usual. Okay, what else struck you as maybe? Good or bad, whatever your experiences were. Well, one of the things that we um, do like is that um, lots of the cafes and even bookshops, but department mm -hmm. stores, for example, usually have a play area mm -hmm. um, in the cafe. We were really surprised that somewhere like a, a bookshop, for example, here has um, a slide and some interactive games for children mm -hmm. as well so that you can leave them there. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, while you're looking or you, you can have a coffee and let them play. And that's really good. I'm not saying that it's impossible to find in Britain, but it's, it's much less usual. Um, we recently went back to Britain and we wanted to meet up with a friend of ours and we said, you know, can we go to some cafe where there's a children's play area? And there just wasn't one. We, uh -huh. it, we couldn't think of any um, anything at all. Why do you think that is so? Because I take it Great Britain has a much higher birth rate, mm -hmm. so statistically you have many, much more children, many more children to take care of. Um, I have no idea <laughs> the way that should be the case. It's just something that struck us. Um, something like the family cafe, for example. Mm -hmm. um, that's again something that we've never come across before. A cafe that is actually arranged for children. Right. Um, so that there's a big play area and mm -hmm. we can sit and read or we can sit and just have a coffee and mm -hmm. don't have to worry. Which, as we both know, is something you <laughs> desperately need if you have small children. Exactly. It's some time off. <laughs> yes. Um, and are there any uh, other things that you didn't like in Germany? Or that you said, mm, I don't know, <laughs> I miss um, this. Um, well, it's a very small thing and it's, it's not really um, not very important, but we did notice it, um, is baby swings. Baby swings. Baby swings. So we, when you go to the park and there's a children's um, playground, for example, yeah. everywhere in Britain and also in Spain, because we've just been to Spain as well and we saw it was the mm -hmm. same there, has a little um, swing mm -hmm. that a baby can go in or a small child. Um, so it's like a kind of cage that they, they sit in. Ah, okay, I get it. Uh -huh. um, so that they can swing on their own. Okay. And <clears throat> it may be that there are some here, but we certainly haven't found any at uh, all. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Just across the border is the town, French town of Sargemin, Sargemünd in German. Mm -hmm. And I know a playground where they have one, but I will agree, yes, <laughs> they do not have it in, in Germany. We feel our children should learn that right away, the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Paris but, as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I, I do know uh, the problem. Uh, look, I would love to go on talking to you, but we're running out of time for this podcast. I would, however, uh, like to have you back in the studio to talk about something we just talked about two minutes ago, which is the birth rate, mm -hmm. uh, which is much lower in Germany uh, than in Great Britain. And maybe we ought to chat a little bit about why you may think that this is so. Okay. okay? So uh, tune in and in two weeks we'll have Sarah back to talk a little bit about German birth rate. And if you want to look at our website, www.ropecast.de, you'll find a little bit more vocabulary on uh, playgrounds, uh, <laughs> uh, other things that you may find which are useful uh, on a German, uh, on an English playground, such things as swings and other expressions that you may not know. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.